Good morning from a rainy morning down here in Coffee Springs. I have to make some corrections from the last video that I made of uh, Orlando L. Smith. He and Lily Smith did not move into the old Dillard house right after they were married. He moved into a house that is at a place called Dill, Alabama. We always call it Post Oak. And it's up oh, Highway 123, which is Old 231. And I believe it's County Road 50. And it's called the Lynn Free Road, where they intersect. It's in the northwest corner of the, that intersection the house is. I have a picture of the house that I have uh, put on. I will put in the on the web or on this video. Uh, they lived there until my daddy, Ogburn Smith, was six years old. They had Sarah Frances Smith, their daughter, after Ogburn, which is about, according to the grave, is about three years later. And she died not too long after she was born because she had a lung dis uh, problem. Her lungs were not developed. Pa Smith and Ma Smith lived in the house and then they moved down to the house where the, they lived uh, the rest of their time, which is the old house there next to Jane's. I have a picture of it, but it's uh, quite different than it was back when they first moved into it. The Holmans, they bought the Holmans on that place, and they bought that place from the Holmans. And it had the two houses, and it had uh, 110 acres, and it was partly woods. They sold the timber on this place and made enough money to pay off the price of the land. So that was a pretty good bargain, I think. They were very resourceful, and they began farming and raising livestock and uh, things like that, and were able to make a living as much as you could make a living in that area because Ogburn worked in the grocery store and he was gone most of the time so I trekked around following Pa Smith doing what he did. So I grew up knowing all about farming and fishing and stuff like that. Some of the things about Pa Smith, he was very much uh, did what Ma Smith wanted him to. And she pretty well ruled the roost there. So Pa Smith was uh, quite a bit subservient to her. Also I can remember us watching out from the, you could see out to their house from our house where I was raised and every night about nine o'clock his light would go across the backyard to the old outhouse. He would go out there for his nightly trek to the toilet. He certainly kept pretty good hours. Also, I can remember Pa Smith sneezed a lot. He sneezed really, really hard. You could hear him for two or three miles. <laughs> so, he had some of his quirks. One thing I didn't like about two of uh, Pa Smith that I didn't like what he did, he would tell me to do something and then he would wind up doing the whole thing and showing me how, so I never got a chance to do it. I don't like for somebody to give me a job and then do it themselves. And a second thing, he would, when he would go fishing, he would worry about what he ought to be doing so much until he didn't enjoy the fishing as much as he should. I think if you've already gone fishing and hasn't hadn't done what you needed to do anyway, well, you might as well enjoy the fishing and not worry so much about it. But Pa Smith was a pretty good old fellow, and I, I liked him. He used to to tell on us youngins. He'd go, he said, well, I'm going to go tell Ethel what you're doing. So so <laughs> he was a pretty well of a snitch for us, too. So that was another characteristic of him. I know one time we uh, got to play in alligators, which they alleged that it was my fault. Mary Hall was coming up to visit Jane, my sister, so they were out. And we were all walking to the store, so we passed a puddle of water pretty close to where the Smith house that Pa and Ma built there, the little house that I have now. And uh, I said, well, let's play alligator. So I pulled them down in the water in the mud, and we were all muddy, and they were trying to get away, and Pa Smith came out, and he said, 
I'm going to go tell Ethel what you kids are doing, what you young'uns are doing. He didn't say kids, he said young'uns. And so all over he went to Ethel, and uh, he told them. So consequently, we all got a whooping that day. We got a lot of whoopings, but it was really good for us. Some of the younger generation, if, I believe if they had more whoopings, they would, would grow better and be healthier. I'd say that's quite a boar hog. They kept them for breeding stock to keep their hogs uh, in good uh, condition. And uh, Ma and Pa were big on raising hogs and having meat and also to sell. So that was one thing they used to make a living. This house looks pretty good now. It is uh, one where Pa Ogburn was born and raised up till he was six years old. It's had considerable improvements, but you can see the general shape of the house and the situation there. And Ma and Pa went in with Granny Dillard and Clinton Dillard, Ella and Clinton, to buy the place. And they bought it together. And Ellen Clinton moved in the house where I was raised down there. And Ma and Pa Smith moved into the other house there. That beside him, when I've been closer to him, I've heard him singing some Sacred Harp songs. He wouldn't lead in the Sacred Harp, but he he liked it and he would sing the songs. 